the developer experience around benchmarks is, let's just say, rough to terrible. They're always cherry picked and often leave out the true competition. And it's hard to understand how a model truly performs when you take into account speed, price, and performance bundled together. With the release of Claude's 3.5 Haiku and OpenAI's predicted outputs, we need a benchmark that we can really feel to understand and digest the cost, speed, and performance of these technologies compared to existing LLMs. So I wanted to take another crack at this and I built a simple tool that can be used to get a decent understanding of model performance, speed, and cost by looking at the simple use case of single word autocompletes across large language models. As you know, Claude 3.5 Haiku is interestingly priced. Let's see if the performance, cost, and speed of the new Claude 3.5 model and the new predicted outputs feature from OpenAI is really worth your time and money. If we type in analyze into our input field, after two seconds, it's going to fire off a debounced autocompletion call to every single LLM we have listed in this table. So we have this completion for every single model fired off thanks to our prompt, which we'll get to in a second. And you can see a bunch of useful metrics alongside this. Let's go ahead and break these down. Execution time, if we go ahead and just sort this, you can see which models were actually the fastest for this response. The total time is gonna keep track of the sum of all of our execution times. We have the execution cost. And this of course is going to keep track of our costs for every run of this prompt. Our total costs is gonna be the sum of our costs. And then we have this really interesting column. Relative cost is super interesting and it's been helpful already for me just to set the stage to how aggressively some of these LLMs are priced. You can see our cheapest model, Gemini 1.5 Flash 8B, is our cheapest version. So we're gonna say that this costs you know, 100%. From there, everything scales up. Gemini 1.5 Flash is gonna be two times more expensive, right? 2.1 times more expensive to be precise. And then things go kind of you know bonkers from there with the most expensive model that we're comparing today, Claude 3.5 Sonnet latest, is gonna be a hundred times more expensive than Gemini 1.5 Flash 8B. That's pretty wild. And as we look through this, you know, one of the big takeaways from this video is going to be, wow, there are some really incredible, low cost, high speed, high performing models that are really worth spending more time looking at and utilizing. So anyway, relative cost is gonna be really important. We have that and then we have actions. So actions is simple. If one of our completions makes an error, we can simply downvote it so that we can mark them incorrect. So by downvoting a model, for one of its completions, we can quickly just analyze the performance. That's all of our columns. Let's go ahead and run a few more examples and then let's look at how this simple autocomplete prompt actually works. I'm going to save the results as we go along here. This is just saving into local storage. And let's run another autocompletion. So let's go ahead and type calc and let's see our models fire off. You can see after a two second debounce, we're getting a bunch of responses and now we have some bad completions. Uh, Flash 8B made a mistake. We're gonna go ahead and dock a point. We can see mini and mini predictive. This is using the new predictive outputs. Also made a mistake. So we're gonna go ahead and dock from those two and everything else nailed it. Let's run update and we should get this new update. So you can see everything getting streamed in there and update inventory, that's perfect. So this is the you know completion we're looking for. Go ahead and dock 8B. This should be update inventory and Doc from Gemini Pro. Some key differences in model performance already. Let's go ahead and run one more here. If we run send, we should get an auto completion here. Send notification. Okay, not bad. Haiku. <laughs> Haiku taking quite a bit of time there, right? Three seconds, almost four seconds. Let's go ahead and dock GPT-4 and 4 predictive. Um, although we can see some interesting data here. GPT-4.0 is running really quickly. Let's go ahead and sort execution time for that run. We can see you know, some pretty interesting results actually across the board. Our slower models in general at the bottom here, you can see you know, Sonnet and the latest Haiku. Uh, they're taking quite a bit of time. You know, Our total time is quite high here, but you can see that they're correct over our you know, very small, very minuscule sample size of four. You can already see some deviation in correctness. But we can see here 4.0 and 4.0 mini are 
running incredibly fast. In the notes tab here, I have some details about the application, the models we're running, uh, some of the features, but most importantly, some limitations, right? This is not a perfect benchmark. There is no such thing as a perfect benchmark. You know, there's network latency. I could be closer to OpenAI's models geographically resulting in, you know, higher performance speed wise. I'm not taking into account Gemini's price increases after 128K. I'm not including any token caching, cost savings. So there are ways to improve this benchmark. This is just a general purpose, quick ad hoc way to understand models. So we're getting some interesting results already. We can see our slowest model in total time is surprisingly our haiku latest. <laughs> 3.5 Haiku is the slowest model, which is not right. Uh, to be fair, again, I have a really small sample size here. Let's go ahead and look at the prompt and then let's run some more auto completions so that we can get our numbers up a little bit and you know make these, make these numbers make a little more sense, hopefully. Switch over to the prompt tab. And one of the important use cases I needed solved for in a benchmark like this is I needed it to be dynamic. So we can come in here and adjust this and then rerun our benchmark, our prompt will include the updated information here that we change. How does this work? How does this prompt actually work? And we can go ahead and pull this out into a code editor. This is a simple, single word autocomplete prompt. The idea here is we pass in some instructions, our completion content, and then our input text, right? So this is the user's input. Our completion content is what we're going to autocomplete against. And then of course, our instructions breaking down exactly how to do this. The most important thing here is that we are replacing the last word in the input text, and then we have an example of what that actually looks like. So this is the prompt, it's quite simple. The key idea for this benchmark is to create a concise prompt that has a yes, no validatable response. Just by looking at our single words and by seeing the responses of every model in our benchmark, we can just say, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, this is correct, this is not correct. And this gives us a simple way to compare models against each other and basically extract the information like runtime costs, relative costs, and a light performance benchmark. So let's go ahead and make a tweak to this. We can add a couple more items here since this is fully reactive. I can come in here and just say something like this. I can say user lists, set that to an empty array. Um, it's also important to know that this can be anything. I just happen to be completing on um, code. You know, this is like simple Python code. So we're mocking like a autocomplete application for a coding assistant, but this could really be anything. You, you can autocomplete phrases, sentences, help documentation, API documentation, really anything you want to. Again, the goal is to create a simple prompt that you can quickly validate and compare your LLMs and new LLM techniques like predicted outputs against. So let's go ahead and finish up here. We'll say tax rate, and we'll just set that to uh, 0 0.10, and we'll create a new function, right? So confirm user sale, pass a user, and then we'll just do the same as we have below here, right? We'll just say pass. We don't really care um, about the implementation detail because we're just running the simple auto completion. So this prompt is complete. It's reactive. It's automatically updating here. And if we hit save, if we type something like tax, we should see our auto completion come through in some of these cases. So very interesting. <laughs> Apparently this was a hard one to complete. Only Sonnet got this one right. So let's go ahead and dock a bunch of points here. So down, down, doc, 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 doc. When our LLM responds with none, this is one of our uh, instructions. The input does not make sense. It will try to autocomplete uh, with none. So maybe I'm being a little unfair there. Let me go ahead and try to give it a little bit more help and I'll type underscore here. And let's see how we do now. So after two second debounce, there we go. So we got a lot more improved answers there. I'll dock from flash. 4.0 and 4.0 predictive, and we'll just keep rolling. So use your list, so I'll just type USC, and let's see if we get a nice autocomplete here after the two second debounce. Okay, nice, right? So you can see some results coming in, dock these. So just removing some points there. Go ahead and push this a little further. Let's try with an R. Let's see if we can get the user list here. Okay, so a little bit better. Haiku making a mistake there. We have 8B, mini, predictive, Mini predictive, making a mistake. You can see quite clearly who the, the winner is if we sort by, you know, success. It is good to see that, you know, for everything you're paying with Sonnet, Sonnet is still the best model overall. Of course, I'm excluding reasoning models. Reasoning models are frankly in their own entire category. We need to think about how to benchmark those in a, you know, different class of their own. Gen. 
see what our results look like here. Nice, so everyone nailed that. Generate invoice. Let's go ahead and run update. So we have this update here. Maybe I already ran that one, not sure. We'll dock a point from AP Flash here. 4040 predictive. And what else do we have? We also have our none case. So if there's no logical completion that can be made based on the last word, we return none. So let's go ahead and just type in some nonsense, ABC123. And now we should get none responses from all of our models. There we go, perfect, perfect. And we can just you know continue typing in complete nonsense and great. So love to see that. How many runs do we have here? So we have 12 runs total. Let's try to trick up Sonnet just a little bit. So I'm gonna type cow and either one of these responses will be acceptable. Let's just go ahead and type cow and see what we get here. There we go, okay, yeah. So great responses overall, all doc, the flash and mini predictive here. And we have calculate discount, that's fine. The rest are calculate total. So this all looks great so far. And you can kind of see where this is going, right? We have a quick ad hoc way to look at the performance of multiple models against each other, running in parallel, we're tracking the results, the costs. Comment down below what you'd like to see in a live benchmark like this. It can be anything from stats to individual features. I think the next most obvious feature to add here is a list of dynamic model, right? Basically a, a multi-select list where we can you know, choose all these. I have all these hard-coded in the code base because these were the only models I want to look at and compare. So let me know what you want to see in a benchmark like this, and I'll plan it for a future video. With the new MacBook releases, I think we're going to have to be paying a lot more attention to local models. Like and subscribe so that you don't miss that benchmark. We will be getting a new, fresh, high-end MacBook Pro with the M4 chip. I'm really, really excited for that to show up. When that does, we're going to run a bunch of benchmarks using tools like this to really compare and see how our local models doing in comparison to the you know high class cloud provider models. So stay tuned for that, like and subscribe so you don't miss those videos. Decent number of results here. Let's go ahead and look at some interesting insights, right? Let's look at total time to execute. I would expect Haiku to be one of the fastest models here. And what we're seeing is it's the slowest model. Something is going wrong there. To give Haiku some grace, uh, we do have it performing really, really well. So you can see here out of our 13 requests, uh, Sonnet, of course, in first place, making zero mistakes across this auto completion. We have 1.5 Pro performing next best and it's tied with Haiku. So that is good to see, right? It is good to see that Haiku is a high performing model, but you know, previously, I think part of a lot of the drama around the Claw 3.5 Haiku release is that the price is just significantly higher than what we were expecting for a model like this, right? We were really expecting Claw 3.5 Haiku to be a model on the level and on the speed, well, beyond the level, but at the speed of models like 4.0 Mini and 1.5 Flash, right? In the kind of fast series. I like to put these models in their own kind of category. It's the fast, cheap intelligence. But what we're actually seeing here in the data, in the benchmark, is Claw 3.5 Haiku is actually a, a high tier, high performing model. This is really, really interesting to see, right? When we look at the relative costs, when you compare uh, Claw 3.5 Haiku to even Gemini 1.5 Flash, it is something like 15 times more expensive. And it's 30 times more expensive than Flash B. This is definitely something to take into account when you're selecting these models, right? You know, when we look at this data here, when we look at even a small benchmark like this, and I definitely implore you, and you know, I definitely suggest you run your own. Every single benchmark is flawed in some sense, in some way. I think there are interesting ways we can make this better. We can do, you know, we can run each one of these models three times and take the best two out of three. We can run multiple instances of each model. You know, there are many ways to improve uh, the truth and to reduce the randomness of these models. But nevertheless, my notes on Claude 3.5 IQ, it's really like Sonnet's little brother, not that much smaller, right? <laughs> We're talking like two years in age difference, right? Like not little, little brother, just little brother. We can see, of course, if we flip our relative costs, we can also see something really interesting. Our 4.0 and 4.0 predictive are 
quite pricey. There are ways to improve this, by the way. I'm very sloppily passing in the entire prompt. The code for this tool is in the description, by the way. I don't always have time to complete and ship code bases to share with you for two reasons, time or its proprietary pieces in the code bases. So if you ever don't see a code base after a video, that's why anytime I can, and when there's no IP in the code bases I'm working on, I always like to share with you on the channel. So just a note there, um, I know I've been getting some comments about where's the code base. The code base will be there 80% of the time, 80% of videos, 20% of the time, it just cannot be there. Anyway, so if you end up taking a look at the code, you'll see that for the predictive GPT-40 and the predictive 40 mini, I actually just pass in this entire prompt, including the input text into the predictive variable. And if we take a quick look at OpenAI's predicted documentation, you can see here, you pass in your prompt as you normally would, but then you also pass in your prediction. So I'm blowing up the context a little bit more than it needs to be. I think autocompletes is an okay use of predicted outputs, but I think really all I should be doing is passing in our um, completion content and not the, you know, instructions or the rest of the prompt basically. So just a quick note there. It is interesting to see though, if we look at our price, we do see a price increase between GPT-40 and 4.0 uh, predictive, right? And same thing with mini, right? For mini, it's about, you know, 100% more expensive. And that's a very small amount to be uh, completely frank because the 100% is our base price, which is our, you know, Gemini 1.5 flash 8B. So there's a lot of interesting stuff here in the data. Let's look at the total time again. I really just want to digest this on the fast and here we can see that 40 mini predictive and 40 predictive are the fastest across all of our runs, right? Even though they made some mistakes here, you know, we're looking at 60% accuracy here. It is great to see predictive running very quickly. It looks like this is a real advantage that, that you can gain from using predicted outputs. So that's really good to see in a quick benchmark. I am super curious why uh, GPT-40 is the fastest. Maybe it's um, usage. Maybe people aren't relying on 4.0 uh, as the kind of go-to model for most cases. I'm not really sure. I could just be closer to a OpenAI server, but with multiple runs, we're gonna see the times really start to average out. Interestingly, we do see flash a bit slower than 4.0. So, you know, just an interesting note there. A mini is coming in way slower than I'd like to see it on average, uh, two seconds slower than every 4.0 model. So that's odd to see. We do have to call out though, 4.0 mini is very, very cheap. Very, very cheap. You can see our three cheapest models right in the center here, Flash 8B, Flash, and 4.0 Mini. I think most of us were really hoping to see Claw 3.5 Haiku in that cheap price bracket, but it's just not. That's just not the model they put out. So when we look at the percentage correct, there's a pretty clear pattern here. For the most part, you know, I would expect Flash 8B to perform the worst here. So it is, you know, good to see that. The cheapest and one of the fastest models should be performing the worst, right? That's just the trade-off that we're making right now in the LLM ecosystem. If you have a fast, cheap model, it's likely going to perform worse. And this is why local models haven't really taken off in a major way yet, unless you have a massive rig. They just cannot perform at the more difficult tasks in any meaningful way. When we move up the ladder here, we can see a big kind of 60% range. All of the kind of fast predictive techniques and models are kind of all in this 60% range. I would expect GPT-40 to be in the higher tier of performance, but we don't really see that. It feels silly to continuously caveat, but this is a very small sample size. 10, 13 runs is not significant. Definitely be something we improve on in future videos. Running probably 20, 30 to 100 of these is gonna give us better sample sizes, but it's still interesting to look at and you know just kind of think about how we can dissect performance versus cost versus speed. And then we have our kind of top three high hitting models here, Claude 3.5 Haiku, Pro version two, and then of course, Sonnet. I do love seeing Sonnet just remain at the top of every chart. This is the improved version also. It may have been helpful to add the previous Sonnet, although honestly, I think they both would get 100%. With this relative cost pricing, like if we just sort relative costs here, Sonnet better be, <laughs> it better be the best. You know, just because within this price range, um, Sonnet is 
quite expensive when you compare it to any you know cheaper model it just is very expensive so if we sort total costs here you know pretty obviously about one cent here predictive also hitting about a cent and then we get down to 40 just under a cent and then it you know pretty rapidly falls off from there again it is a, a bummer to see haiku at this price i think the important thing to note here with haiku is it's not in that class of cheap fast models anymore it just isn't it's also not fast right if we sort by runtime for whatever reason haiku is the slowest model here so um anyway that's enough time to ramp i'm, I'm sorry to go in circles looking at this small sample size of data you know a couple things to note here having a reactive benchmarking tool like this where you can quickly test out new capabilities for with dynamic prompts against existing LLMs is super valuable for understanding not just model performance, but costs and speed as well, right? Those are the three kind of top level benchmarks that really matter with models and model techniques like predicted outputs. It's performance, cost, and speed. You know, this benchmark, as I mentioned several times, it's not perfect. We can go ahead and run another one, right? You know, sometimes the models will get things right. Sometimes they'll get them wrong. That happens. And, you know, it's not a massive deal. All of our models got this one right. On average, you know, as we scale this up, I think we'll see for this prompt, uh, the numbers I was seeing, you know, you get past 20, 30 sample size, everything pushes up above 70, 80% correct. So all the models in this list at least are quite capable. The one exception maybe is 8B, just because it's so small, it's packing a lot of intelligence at a fantastic price. Um, so it's bound to make some mistakes, right? From this benchmark, we can see Haiku is good, but you have to make sure it's worth the cost, especially when you compare it to other models, right? If we resort our costs here, you can see the relative pricing in a really blunt forward way, right? Starting at flash 8B, that's our base price of, you know, just fractions of a fraction of a fraction of a cent, which is just beautiful to see. Flash bumps it up quite a bit. Mini, it's triple the price. Uh, mini predictive, four times the price. And then all of a sudden, Haiku is charging, it's a dollar per million tokens, right? Yeah, dollar per million tokens. And as you can see, that really kicks up the price, right? It, it just really explodes. These cheap, fast models contain incredible intelligence, fast intelligence at a really, really cheap price. So definitely a clear takeaway from running experiments like this is that we should probably be leaning on these fast models a little bit more. Another takeaway, it's pretty clear that Claw 3.5 Haiku is not a cheap, fast model. It is a high-performing, slower model, um, much like Claw 3.5 Sonnet, but just a tier below Claw 3.5 Sonnet. Uh, we can see 1.5 Pro performing quite well. It is interesting to see. You can think of Claw 3.5 Haiku and 1.5 Pro at about the same level, right? They scored the same and they have nearly the same price. So again, small experiment, you wanna add more data to this and most importantly, you wanna test against your use cases to make it all really make sense. You know, when we sort by just pure performance, if all you care about is getting the job done right, no matter the cost, the answer is still very clearly Claude 3.5 Sonnet, followed by Pro and followed by Haiku. A note on predictive outputs, it does seem to be, if we sort, let's go ahead and sort by model here. If we look at the um, 4 o mini predictive, we do see a small, pretty much non-existent um, performance hit. Again, we need more data to really show that that's meaningful. And we see a slight price increase. But what we'll notice here generally is that the predictive models are quite a bit faster, especially for mini. We may have had some data flukes here with the 4.0 model. 4.0 is fast, 4.0 predictive is fast, and mini predictive seems to be extraordinarily fast. So these are all preliminary notes. You know, like all benchmarks, take this with a grain of salt and be sure to test as many times as you can against your specific use case. That's the only benchmark that matters in the end. I recommend gathering hundreds of prompts and expectations for each prompt, and then you can really see how the models perform. Drop a comment, let me know what you wanna see in benchmarks like this moving forward. If there are any models or features that you wanna see, I'll make a plan for a future video where we dig into more benchmarks like this. If you wanna dive into this, this code is gonna be linked in the description for you to check out and test. Subscribe if you wanna stay up to date on useful ways to digest new LLMs and new features so that you can better understand what you can do in the age of generative AI.
Stay focused and keep building.